Welcome back to Hardware Unbox. Today we are taking our first look at AMD's new Radeon RX 6000M series of GPUs destined for gaming laptops, which AMD announced at Computex earlier this week. According to that presentation, these new RDNA 2 GPUs are said to be AMD's most competitive mobile discrete graphics products in quite some time, which might finally bring some genuine heat to Nvidia that have been dominating the market for years. This video will be a comprehensive benchmark review of the Radeon RX 6800M, AMD's flagship laptop GPU that we've had hands-on time with since a few days before its launch. Luckily, AMD have used sensible naming for their products here, with the M suffix clearly distinguishing this GPU from its desktop counterparts in the RX 6800 and RX 6800 XT, so I won't need to waste any time in this video on naming. And that's an important point because the RX 6800M is based on Navi 22 silicon, the same GPU die as used in the RX 6700 XT on desktop. In fact, the specifications for the 6800M and 6700 XT are very similar. Both feature 40 compute units, 96 megabytes of infinity cache, and 12 gigabytes of GDDR6 memory. The only real difference here is the 6800M's slightly lower game clock of 2300 MHz, with the memory clock rate of 16 gigabits per second remaining the same. There is also an RX 6700M and RX 6600M in AMD's lineup, which hopefully we'll be able to evaluate soon. From a competition perspective, AMD are pitting the 6800M up against Nvidia's highest end laptop GPUs in the GeForce RTX 3080 laptop and RTX 3070 laptop, so this is a true battle at the high end. In contrast, previous AMD mobile GPUs really haven't been powerful enough or efficient enough to match Nvidia's best offerings, which has left them floundering and largely unused, like last year's RX 5700M. The laptop we have on hand for testing today is quite interesting in itself, the ASUS ROG Strix G15 AMD Advantage Edition, which is an AMD plus AMD laptop that features a Ryzen 9 5900HX processor alongside the Radeon RX 6800M GPU we are focusing on today. AMD announced the Advantage program at Computex essentially as a design and certification process that attempts to produce the best quality laptops using AMD internals. It seems to have paid off here with a decent design and inclusions like a 300Hz IPS display and liquid metal for both the CPU and GPU. We don't really review laptops on this channel, check Jared's tech for when he finishes his review, but there are still some important things to go over about this test system before we get to benchmarking. The Strix G15 uses AMD SmartShift technology, which balances total system power draw between the CPU and GPU depending on the workload. You may be familiar with this in NVIDIA laptop platforms through their equivalent called Dynamic Boost 2.0. This means that the Strix G15's RX 6800M operates at a range of different power levels depending on how much CPU power is needed, just like the latest NVIDIA RTX 30 series laptops. However, what I have found is that SmartShift provides a much greater dynamic range between the highest and lowest power levels for both the CPU and GPU. This laptop has 180 watts of power delivery and cooling capacity in total for the CPU and GPU, which means for a nominal 45 watt CPU draw, the GPU sits at 135 watts, a little lower than the 145 watts AMD announced in their presentation, although they did note that OEMs have some flexibility here. But the full power range that I observed during gaming was anywhere from 110 to 160 watts on the GPU. 110 watts during CPU limited gaming with the 5900HX cranked up to 70 watts, and as high as 160 watts in really GPU limited situations, with the CPU just sipping power at 20 watts. This is a much wider range than I've seen with any Nvidia laptop so far, which tend to keep things tighter with only 15 to 20 watts of dynamic boost range. AMD's approach should help gamers get the best performance in a wider range of gaming conditions, especially when CPU limited. Despite featuring such a wide power range, in practice, most games peg the GPU between 130 and 150 watts of power draw, with the CPU therefore sitting between 50 and 30 watts. I don't know if this will differ with other RX 6800M laptops, as only one has been announced so far, and this GPU's official specs merely say 145 watts plus for GPU power. I don't expect to see any low power, slower 80 watt variants though, which should simplify the buying process. 
The other thing to note is that Jared's Tech discovered that while the Strix G15 does ship with 16GB of dual channel DDR4 3200 memory, ASUS are using memory modules with slower than normal sub timings, which hurts performance in some situations. As such, we've swapped out the memory in our system for a more traditional kit with regular timings, allowing us to proceed with more apples to apples comparisons with other laptops we've tested that don't suffer from the same issue. ASUS says the use of this particular memory kit is down to supply constraints in the current market. We just want to make sure that we're testing every laptop apples to apples, which is why we've swapped it out. Today's benchmarking has been done at two resolutions, 1080p using the laptop's internal display, which is connected through the integrated graphics, and 1440p using an external display hooked directly to the discrete GPU. So let's get on with the testing. The first game we are looking at is Metro Exodus. At 1080p, the RX 6800M performs okay, beating the RTX 3070 laptop GPU by 7%, but ultimately falling 5% behind the more powerful RTX 3080 laptop GPU with a similar 135 to 155 watt power range. All of these GPUs deliver a very good experience at 1080p, but the 6800M isn't quite in a leading position here. The margin worsens at 1440p using ultra settings. The 6800M is now only able to match the RTX 3070 in terms of performance, falling well behind the RTX 3080 laptop GPU. This was one of the largest margins we saw between the 6800M and RTX 3080 laptop, with the 6800M registering 17% lower performance. In Borderlands 3 at 1080p, the RX 6800M is the fastest laptop GPU we've tested so far, benefiting from SmartShift technology to best alleviate a small CPU bottleneck. As such, this configuration beats the RTX 3070 and RTX 3080 configurations that we've tested. Results are still decent at 1440p though. The RX 6800M comes in 11% faster than the RTX 3070 laptop GPU at this resolution, and falls just 6% behind NVIDIA's RTX 3080 laptop GPU. That's pretty competitive given by all reports AMD's previous generation laptop GPUs couldn't get anywhere near NVIDIA in these sorts of games. Red Dead Redemption 2 at 1080p is quite GPU demanding, and AMD gets a win here, 2% faster than the RTX 3080 laptop GPU at a similar power level, and 13% faster than the best RTX 3070 laptop configuration we've tested so far. The AMD plus AMD configuration also helps to deliver better 1% low performance as you can see in this chart. At 1440p, the RX 6800M effectively matches the performance of the RTX 3080 laptop GPU, which is a solid result for AMD's flagship GPU. We're seeing 17% better performance than the RTX 3070. Control is a punishing title on the GPU, and AMD isn't able to keep up with the RTX 3080 at 1080p, falling 6% behind. The RX 6800M still delivers quite good numbers, beating the RTX 3070 by 5%, but it's not the same margin as seen in the previous two games we've been looking at. When AMD loses at 1080p, typically they lose by more at 1440p. Here the 6800M is 15% slower than the RTX 3080 laptop GPU, and this is without ray tracing factored in. While the focus of today's review is not on ray tracing performance, NVIDIA GPUs are currently superior for it, so if you want more mature ray tracing support, NVIDIA is the way to go. In Assassin's Creed Valhalla at 1080p, the Radeon RX 6800M is 3% faster than NVIDIA's GeForce RTX 3080 laptop GPU and 17% faster than the RTX 3070, putting the 6800M in the leading position for mobile GPUs at this resolution. At 1440p, the 6800M is also competitive, but is now 3% slower than the 3080, as NVIDIA's architecture does scale better as the resolution increases, a phenomenon we also observed with their desktop GPUs when they launched last year. RDNA 2 is a bit of a beast at 1080p and still good at 1440p, but not quite as good as Ampere in this situation. In Cyberpunk 2077, the 6800M delivers the same average frame rate as the 3080 laptop GPU, or at least we're looking at a 1 FPS margin, which is practically the same. However, 1% low performance is noticeably better on the AMD GPU, about 7% better in this instance. Performance is also 17% higher than the RTX 3070 when looking at this 1080p data. At 1440p, as we've seen in the past few games, the RX 6800M slips behind the RTX 3080 laptop GPU, now sitting evenly between it and the 3070. Like with Control, if you want to use ray tracing, it's a non-contest in this title, as Cyberpunk has DLSS support on top of NVIDIA, also being faster at ray tracing. 
In Horizon Zero Dawn at 1080p, again, performance is roughly equal between the 3080 laptop GPU and the 6800M, with the 6800M providing better 1% low performance. The 6800M is 13% faster than the RTX 3070 laptop GPU in this title. Then at 1440p, the 6800M slips well behind the RTX 3080, coming closer to the RTX 3070 laptop GPU in terms of average and 1% low performance, although faster than that offering. The final title we're looking at in detail today is Dirt 5 running at 1440p where, look, if you've been following the story so far, you pretty much know how this one will end. The 6800M is 5% slower than the RTX 3080 laptop GPU, but 13% faster than the RTX 3070, so in between those two GPUs from NVIDIA. Here are some head-to-head -head comparisons featuring the rest of the titles we benchmarked. At 1080p, we're using a smaller subset of 12 titles to avoid the games that are heavily CPU limited at this resolution, which does happen on an RX 6800M based machine. Compared to the RTX 3080 laptop GPU running at 135 to 155 watts, whether you go AMD or Nvidia, you'll be getting basically the same performance on average. This is of particular importance to those gaming on the laptop's display itself, which will often be 1080p and routed through the iGPU, which is what we tested. It should be noted there is a small CPU difference here as we're comparing 5900HX results with the 6800M to 10980HK results with the RTX 3080. At 1440p, the RX 6800M is 6% 6 slower than the RTX 3080 laptop GPU on average across our 18 test sample. A few titles were still somewhat CPU limited here, including Hitman 3's Punishing Dartmoor benchmark and Resident Evil 2, along with an outlier in Shadow of the Tomb Raider. If you want to discount the CPU limited numbers, the margin increases by 1% in NVIDIA's favour, but the general message is the same. At a higher resolution, the RTX 3080 laptop GPU is faster. However, the RX 6800M is pretty much always faster than the RTX 3070 laptop GPU that we tested at 115 to 130 watts using the Ryzen 9 5900HX, so the very same CPU. At 1080p, the RX 6800M is 13% faster on average, which is quite decent, although it does consume somewhat more power during operation. At 1440p, the RX 6800M is also faster than the RTX 3070 laptop GPU. Here I reported an 11% margin in favour of AMD on average across 18 game tests. So as I talked about in a few of the game results, in general, the RX 6800M sits closer to the RTX 3080 laptop GPU than it does to the RTX 3070 at this resolution and with a directed DGPU display connection. Overall, the AMD Radeon RX 6800M is quite an impressive laptop GPU. It's certainly the first time in a while that I've been genuinely happy with the performance from an AMD discrete mobile GPU at a given power level. RDNA 2 is clearly a significant step forward for AMD's GPU efficiency, and that helps them deliver true competition to the laptop gaming market for the first time since I've been testing gaming laptops. Purely talking in terms of traditional game performance, the RX 6800M is able to match NVIDIA's GeForce RTX 3080 laptop GPU at 1080p, while it comes in a bit slower at 1440p. It's also at least 10% faster than the RTX 3070 laptop GPU on average, so in general I'd say the 6800M sits between the 3070 and 3080 laptop parts, although a bit closer to the highest tier 3080. This doesn't give AMD the outright fastest laptop GPU on the market, but again it's very competitive at a similar power level, and it presents a significant improvement over prior AMD GPUs. This is great news for consumers and laptop buyers in general, because competition is the biggest contributing factor to driving the market forward. Now that AMD is taking the fight right up to Nvidia and at times matching the best they have to offer, Nvidia can't just rest on their laurels. Bringing competition to laptop GPUs will hopefully lead to better products and better pricing. These days though, performance isn't the end of the story, and there is a suite of features that each brand brings to the table that must be considered. As we've talked about a lot on this channel, currently NVIDIA does offer the more mature ray tracing implementation, so if that's something that interests you, the 6800M is not a great choice. Similarly, DLSS 2.0 is a big selling point right now, and adoption is growing, which at least for now gives NVIDIA the edge in some games, though it's still a minority of the titles we are benchmarking. On top of that, NVIDIA also provides their encoder functionality, native CUDA support, and features like RTX Voice, which depending on your preferences and needs may also swing you over to Team Green. But for mobile devices, I actually think AMD is a bit more competitive in feature set than on the desktop, and that's down to SmartShift. 
Having now tested both SmartShift and Dynamic Boost 2.0, the wider power range and greater control that SmartShift provides in an AMD CPU plus GPU laptop does seem superior to what Nvidia offers. Setting the CPU as low as 20 watts and as high as 70 watts, depending on how demanding the game is on the CPU, led to consistently great results even in titles that hit the CPU hard, and I am yet to see that sort of range or control in an RTX 30 based laptop from Nvidia. AMD are also gunning hard in this market with a huge price advantage. The ASUS ROG Strix G15 AMD Advantage Edition we tested in this video is priced between $1550 and $1700 US dollars depending on the configuration. That's at least $500 cheaper than the cheapest RTX 3080 laptop available at Newegg, Best Buy or Micro Center, a Gigabyte Aorus model which doesn't even feature the 135 watt power configuration we tested in this video, that's more of a Max-Q sort of laptop. In fact, the ASUS Strix G15 with the 6800M is actually at at least $100 cheaper than the Strix G15 with the RTX 3070 for what should be approximately 10-15% to better performance. That's an outstanding deal and the sort of thing we love to see when competition is reintroduced to the market. Having better performance and a better price is a winning combination, and so at the end of the day AMD are ticking quite a few boxes with the Radeon RX 6800M. Let's hope we see wide adoption in a range of gaming laptops. Anyway, that's it for our testing of the 6800M. Very competitive, it's great to see AMD and Nvidia fighting it out for gaming laptops for the first time in a long time. AMD's just recently ticked off sort of the CPU battle between them and Intel, and now they're ticking off the GPU battle with them and Nvidia, so it's great. And I think that is going to lead to much better laptops for everyone in the future, whether that's using AMD or NVIDIA hardware. If you're interested in supporting our laptop testing, we do have our Patreon and Floatplane accounts. Links to those are in the description below. We'll be using a few of those funds in the coming weeks to buy some more laptops to test to fill out all the rest of the stuff that we haven't been able to check out just yet. So thanks to everyone who supports us there, and thanks for watching. I will catch you in the next one.